So in this video I'm going to be doing a coolant flush on this car, which is a 2005 Toyota Matrix. Okay, the first step is going to be to jack up the car, pull up the parking brake. And so we go underneath. Okay, the flushing has three parts. One, we drain, two, we flush, and three, we refill. Okay, so first the draining, and there are three places where we drain. The first one of these is the radiator. Bring that to focus right there, that little plug here. You turn this um, like that. And the second is the engine block, and I'll show you under the car where that is. And the third will be the radiator um, expansion tank, which would be up here. Okay, so we'll do those in order. First, let's do the radiator. First, put my drain bucket and a large drain bucket underneath the car, underneath the, the radiator. Okay, see there I put a, a tube in that actually fits into that opening. As you can see here, um, it's draining into my bucket. The wrench there is just, a, it's kind of springy, and so that's just to keep it tied down by the weight. Let's see, if we um, remove the radiator cap, that will remove a, uh, the vacuum and actually it'll flow out more quickly. And you can hear, even hear it. Uh, I can hear it pulling out even more. Okay, the second uh, place to drain is with the overflow tank. And so we look on the bottom here. See the hose uh, just hooking around. You see it's that hose is just coming from the bottom and it snakes up to the top and into the radiator. So if we remove this, and then we drop it below the level, it'll siphon off and it'll drain into a bucket. This is a picture in the Haynes manual of the engine drain plug right there. Uh, question is, where is this in the engine? So we're gonna go find it. Okay, going under the car. So where we are, we're under the, kind of in the middle under the car, under the engine. Right here is the, the oil pan. And over here you see a cross member. And then on that side is the, this is the uh, transaxle. So we're underneath the engine. And you see the CV bolt there, joint there. And you can just catch a glimpse of it. It's kind of a rusty bit. You see there, you see it there, there's that little spout, and it's right there. So you see there's a uh, 10 millimeter, I believe, bolt, uh, unscrew that, and attach a hose to the little spout, and that should drain coolant out of the engine block. Question is, how do I get a pair of hands in there? Okay, you can see there, I've got my a ratchet on that. Now I just have to turn it. Uh, that's all drained out. I removed the screw there, I have to reattach it. Not much came out. You can see some dribbles coming out. Let's attack, reattach it, and uh, then our drain is complete. Okay, and there's our screw that came out. Now I'm just gonna put it back in. Okay. Just hand tight, no tools, because it's plastic. Oh, 
Okay, so we've done the first part, we've done the draining part, now we do the flush part. To, to, to flush the system, you have to remove the thermostat, which isn't a big deal. However, to access the thermostat, one has to remove the alternator. And to remove the alternator, you have to remove the, the serpentine belt. And to remove the serpentine belt, you have to remove the engine cover. So it's kind of going into the rabbit hole here. None of those steps are particularly difficult, or at least I'm told. So the first step we're going to do is um, we can remove the V-belt. Or actually what we're going to do is we're just going to loop it off the alternator. So I can remove the alternator, which is the uppermost pulley. And the way we do that is there's a, a tensioner bolt. And you see there, there's a tensioner bolt. There are two bolts. There's this one, which is actually... Uh, which I'm not going to touch, and then there's this bolt. I put a wrench, or I'm supposed to put a wrench around that, and that will release the tension on the belt. So let's try to do that. I've got a ratchet there on the upper bolt, which has moved the entire bracket, uh, and then I have I have a large pipe, and what I'm going to do is as I move this towards the car clockwise. That should slacken the uh, drive belt here on the alternator. And then I will, with the other hand, is loop this off the pulley. Okay? Okay, you can see the alternator belt is, I've taken it off and now I have to loosen two bolts. The first one is right there. That should be easy to get to. And the other one is down below, right there, that bolt. Okay, the lower bolt there, 14 millimeter. Okay, I've moved the, the alternator out of the way. I may not have to undo all the connections there, but you can see the two bolts for the thermostats right underneath that housing. And what I do is you remove the thermostat and then reinstall the housing. And you, the reason you do that is the thermostat, when the car is cold, which of course it is, basically blocks the cooling system. So if you want to flush it, you have to, you have to remove the thermostat. So there are two, um, I think those are eight millimeter bolts. And I'm going to remove those. Here's the thermostat housing. I removed the bolts, revealing the thermostat. Okay. And I'm just going to pluck that out. I have to take note of the orientation. Okay, there's my thermostat. And there you have some more coolant. There it is. Okay. And there's the housing of the thermostat. Okay, so I'm just going to replace the housing and replace the gasket. Okay, so I'm going to remove this gasket. I'm going to replace this. But I'll just put it in. So you see there I've reinstalled the... That's just the old gasket, but that'll be good enough for the flush. There's one nut. Second nut. Okay, now I'll just tighten those up with a wrench. Okay, remove the upper radiator hose, which is this. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, we're going to put the garden hose in here, and then it's going to drain out of the pipe that I detached, and it'll go into the lower radiator. Well, actually, it's going to splash around everywhere. Now we're done with the flushing, now we move to the next stage, but before we do that, we have to reattach the thermostat and the alternator. So let's first reattach the thermostat. Removing the 10 millimeter bolts that attach the housing. And the bottom, the bottom bolt. this one off and loosen it by hand. Okay, when I remove that there's going to be some fluid coming out so I just put some uh, paper towels there to protect the, um, the AC compressor. All right, here's the thermostat. It's the old gasket gasket. You can see here it's got a, a groove in the middle and that's where the edge of the thermostat goes in. So I just place that around. Around the circumference of the, of the sort of lip here. Move into the groove. set. All right, the way this goes in is first of all the spring side goes into the engine like that, right? And then um, if you look around here you have what they call the jiggle pin. This little thing is the jiggle pin and that goes at the 12 o'clock position. It has to be in the upright. So, so we're going to put it in like this. The jiggle pin at 8, 12 o'clock. Okay, they're attached, now I just have to torque them. Okay, the torque listed is 96 inch-pounds. Getting that last nut's kind of tricky, so I have to put a sort of universal joint on my, um, my torque wrench. So I'm not going to be able to do that with one hand, but I'm going to do my best to torque that, and then the upper bolt should be easier. Okay, okay now... Uh, Attaching the, reinstalling the alternator, uh, and we're going to try to line up the alternator. It's surprisingly tricky, actually. All you have to do is bolt it in, but I have some drill bits that are a smaller diameter than the sort of mounting holes, and then I'm going to sort of mount them both, and then I can line up the, the screws. Okay, the alternator is a real bear. Um, I'm holding together the, the top screw, uh, bracket. I sort of see the drill bit there just to line it up. So then I can um, 
line up my try to get my bottom uh, bolt in and you see my bolt is sort of right there it's right underneath the uh, pulley all right folks i got the alternator on finally uh, with the drill bit technique it's not that hard except uh, i don't know you have to uh you have to sort of finesse it a bit anyway uh that's all done what i'm going to do now is look at these connectors i'm going to uh now since i have them apart i'm going to just clean them up with a little bit of um this stuff it's an electrical cleaner uh, while I have them out. Those look a little corroded there. Okay, wiring all hooked up. Hopefully it'll all uh, work the way it did before. Now we turn our attention to the serpentine belt. What I'm going to do is going to remove the, the old one and uh, or replace that. Okay, see it's on. Did you get it? I got it. Okay, let me make sure this is this is right. This is right. Do you want me to stop it? Uh, no. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Okay. All right. Don't stop it. Here, Lily. Say hi. Hi. Lily's my assistant who helped me the attachment of the the serpentine belt. Be attaching the upper radiator hose. Clamp. Okay, I've uh, filled it right to the top here, and as you fill it, you go to the upper radiator hose, which is over here, and periodically, where is that, right here, you just kind of squeeze that to get air bubbles out. And when I go over here, when I squeeze it, the water level will go up a little bit. But that's kind of as much as, as, as can fit in now. Um, now the thermostat's still closed, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the car, get it up to temperature, the thermostat will open, and then that, that will allow coolant to go through the entire system, and then I'm going to have to uh, or just sort of top it off. Okay, going to start the car up. And turn on the Heat to full. Okay, the car's starting to heat up a little bit, and um, I'm getting some heat out of my heating system, which is good. Yeah, lots coming out there. Lots coming out there. Very good. Okay, I shut off the car, and now I'm going to let it cool down. Okay, I've let the car run for a while, let it cool off. And okay. okay, filling up the the reservoir, I'll fill up a little tad more. Hi guys, let me just finish this video by mentioning how I might do things differently if I'd have to do this over again. And one thing that I think I learned is 
Probably the one step that you could get away with skipping would be draining the engine block. I don't know if the video really captured it well, but it really was difficult to access under the car, um, getting, getting a wrench on that little, little bolt. And really not much coolant actually came out of there. After having already drained the radiator, there wasn't really much that came out of that, um, out of the engine block. And you're flushing it out anyway. So um, that step you could probably, probably skip, I think. Um, and as far as the whole flushing procedure, you know, if, if it haven't, hasn't been done in years and maybe the, you don't know much about the history of the car, say maybe you, you, you bought the car secondhand and you don't know when it was done last, it'd probably be worth, do, worth doing. But for regular maintenance, I, I think that, at least with the Toyota, uh, you could probably get away with um, just sort of draining, dra period, you know, every year or two, draining and filling the radiator, I think would be, would be fine. Um, the removing the thermostat and the alternator really does it, it sort of adds up. It makes it a bigger project than it probably really has to be. Um, if you have to replace one of those parts anyway, um, you know, if your alternator goes and you're replacing that, maybe that'd be a good time to do a radiator flush. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.